Hello everyone and welcome back to a brand new day of Road to TG World 2019. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. If you're watching YouTube, don't forget to leave a like. Really, really helps out the channel and the video itself. Really appreciate the support. And now we are going to be moving on to um, reviewing the puzzle deck that pretty much... Um, reviewing the puzzle deck that... Um, that got top 8 at Portland, um, it's not puzzle like on Rock, it's just pure puzzle, which is very interesting to see. It tries to work off of very cheap attacks, such as um, puzzle sledgehammer dealing 30 damage plus 90 more if your opponent has exactly 4 price cards, but with strong energy, beast energy, and choice bands and muscle bands and Diancy, you actually get a huge boost to that base damage, even if you're not at... Um, for price cards, same thing with Puzzle GX, 190 HP and Ultra Beast as well. Jet Punch deals the very same 30 damage, but deals 30 damage to the bench as well. And Knuckle Impact deals 160 damage and Puzzle can attack next turn. Now our GX attack, Absorption GX, deals 40 damage for each of your remaining price cards, which is a really good attack in the early stages of the game, but a really bad one as the game goes on. You'll have Landorus EX with its 180 HP to attack Hammerhead, dealing 30 damage to one of your opponent's benched Pokemon, just like Bodzol, but not an Ultra Beast, but different weakness to Water rather than Psychic. Lance Judgment deals 80 damage, and if you choose to discard all the Fighting Energy, you deal 70 more. So between Diancy, Choice Bands, and Strong Energies, you should be able to be doing roughly the same as Knuckle Impact, essentially one hit KOing most Pokemon out there. Um, Zygarde EX is another inclusion into a deck, 190 HP, and then we have Lance Pulse dealing 20 damage, and if there's any stadium card in play, this attack does 20 more damage, and Cell Storm is a big reason why this is in here, you deal 60 damage, and then you heal 30 damage from this Pokemon, so against Terminate, this is your best bet, you get to heal and um, deny them prizes, so that would be the focus, then you also have Giratina with its Ivar Light ability, which prevents Pokemon Breaks from using abilities or having abilities. Therefore, you stop Turn and Break and Greninja GX from running you over. We also have Sudowoodo with its Roadblock ability. We have Diancy Prism Star um, with Princess's Cheer so that you deal extra 20 damage. All your fighting Pokemon do. And then you can use Diamond Rain, but you're probably not going to. Um, Sudowoodo's Roadblock, I didn't mention, um, stops your opponent from having more than five benched Pokemon. They can have up to four. And then finally, Oricor is a great way to counter Night March or try to counter Night March, though I'd argue it's still a pretty bad matchup for us. Supporters wise, we have two Juniper, two N, um, two Guzma, one Acerola, one Cold Res, one Lysander, and then three Cynthias and four Karinas. Karinas being the biggest addition, where you get to search your deck for a fighting type Pokemon and an item card, reveal them and put them into your hand. So we can search for any Pokemon of the fighting types and we can search for a string which is a pretty big deal. Now items wise we have um, four, um, four of nothing, <laughs> uh, four versus Seekers, one Nest Ball um, in case we need double Pokemon off of the Karina, um, double com double uh, B-String I mean, one Energy Loto which is kind of better than Professor's Letter because it has a chance of finding us the strong energy. We have one computer search, we have one risk stretcher, one field lower, two choice bands, one muscle band, three float stones, and finally three brooklet heal, which add even more consistency to the deck. We are only using basic Pokemon, so um, we don't have to worry about uh, playing Ultra Ball to find evolutions or anything. Energy wise, we have 13, eight basic fighting, four strong that add 20 damage to our attacks, and one beast energy, which does add 30 damage to an attack by. Um, by an Ultra Beast. Okay, so Piglet Liquid, what's the price of Promo Lorantis? I honestly have no idea. Let's call a coin flip. Let's flip heads here and start us off. Did I play Durant? Yes, I already played Durant Dylan. I played three or four games with Durant and I only lost one. I only lost one, where my opponent, if he hadn't had the field lore, or if I had hit the two head flips on um, Team Rocket's handiwork, we actually would have won. <sighs> what a hand. Okay, so pretty terrible hand. 
Uh, we are going first, but versus C, double versus C going in our hand. I guess we're gonna top deck Sycamore if my past experience is any to go for. Where's the next event? Not quite. Where's the next event I am attending? Oh gosh, are we really up against um, Shock Clock? My next event is Anaheim Regional JKN, which will take place on, um, which will take place on uh, December 15 and December 16. Okay, so this is some sort of Seismic Toad Raichu deck. Item lock plus paralysis plus poison. Plus I don't know what else. Against Professor Y. Professor, why you do this to me? So we're gonna see a very harsh sycamore we're getting rid of two Raichus, and N, another Sycamore, and a Lysander, so really going out of their way in order to not let me, um, or to not reshuffle my hand. I mean, honestly, I need an energy to just, like get back into things. We stay asleep even, so everything just going wrong. However, thanks to that Kuzma, and thanks to that um, energy we are going to be able to do something here okay so the question here is do i take a knockout on a pikachu or why wouldn't you play 70 hp pikachus i guess it has the agility attack or do i hit against the viper now let's just attack the pikachu let's get a price card let's also pressure the Pikachu, right? Because we've already seen two Raichus discarded, so there's not a great chance that my plan will evolve into the Raichu. Another item that we are not able to play, another Hypnotoxic Laser to annoy us, another Heads, and another Sycamore. So very jealous of my opponent's supporters here. <laughs> and the Raichu. Oh, but it's a circle circuit Raichu. Okay. And we are weak <laughs> to water. And we stay asleep. Oh my god. <laughs> what even is this? And literally everything that could have gone wrong went wrong. <laughs> wow. Holy moly. That was the culmination of bad luck, right? You literally can't have worse luck than that. <laughs> okay, so it's only up from here, right? We hit rock bottom the previous game. Let's let's recoup. Let's gather ourselves, let's get ourselves together and let's just, um, let's just get going here. Okay. That was a horrible hand, horrible flips, horrible top decks, horrible everything. But we got that out of the way, right? Got that out of the way. Okay, and now this is a pretty decent hand. Nothing to write home about for sure, but pretty decent-ish. And we do see that we are up against Turbo Dark with Mechanadel. So, hopefully, a good matchup for us, right? Hopefully a good matchup for us. We do get two extra cards off of the mulligan. I feel like my one will be very tempted to end me, so I'm gonna go ahead gonna go ahead and bench that friend. What's my favorite deck of all time, Josh? Definitely Queen Dump. The deck I got third place at Worlds with. That's definitely my all-time favorite deck. Hello Voodoo Luke, thank you so much for hanging out. Cynthia never disappoints, <laughs> indeed. Cynthia will be the supporter of choice here, I believe. 
And yeah, like between Naganadel and Dark Ride GX, Turbo Dark does have a lot of energy recovery and dark patches. Is it enough to win though? Play. And it has the Dark Rise, it can play up to eight Dark Rise, that's crazy. What year? 2005. And there's the end, see? There's the end. Um, 2005, Albert is judged. If you want to search for Queendom Pablo Mesa, you will find more information on that deck. Okay, Brooklyn Hill and Sudowoodo and Cynthia and Floatstone. This is more than we could have asked for, right? More than we could have hoped for. Now all we need is a is um, a strong energy because I'm definitely gonna Brooklyn Hill for Diancy to get a knockout on that Poiple. And then sure, maybe my opponent poisons me and knocks out my Buzzle, but then we just sledgehammer it, so we should be okay here. We should, should, should be okay. The deck insists on us having a Cynthia, right? The deck is very adamant on us having a Cynthia. And then there's a Cynthia, please strong energy come to me. Okay, I mean, we got the strong energy, right? We, we kind of got the strong energy. Do you still have the deck sleeved? I do. I actually have a nice collection of... Um, I feel like I should use the Beast Energy. Uh, 180, 30, 50. Choice band. Choice band, 30, 60. Yeah, the, the Nancy is always going to be there. So I should use the Beast Energy. Because there could be a situation where I need to attack for one energy with Landorus. And I have the Beast and therefore I can't attack. Um... Yeah, Josh, exactly. Um, I have a lot of old school decks built. I have four 2004 decks built. I have four 2005 decks built. I have four 2006 decks built. I have four 2007 decks built. I think I have four 2008 decks built. Have I seen the new Nido Queen from Tackbolt set? Yes, I have. It's gonna be amazing, Joe Bro. It's actually going to be amazing. It's like the old Nido Queen. It's basically the old Nido Queen, just a psychic type now. Okay, so we lose our field lore and our blue and our brooklet heal. Not that big a deal. We are not going to get end. We are going my opponent is going to Sycamore. The choice went there feels unnecessary, and I feel like it would have been much better on the Naganadel, because you're trying to knock me out with dead end, right? Um, Cream Lover, thank you so much for the host. Thank you so much for the host. Very kind of you. Thank you so, so much for the host. I feel like I, I want some more M&Ms. In the base. That already happened. Potato Wool already contributed the 100 bits, but then we get another M&M. Ooh, do we get that back? Yay. <laughs> we didn't lose the red M&M. Flygon GX, that would be amazing. The Flygon where it's active, you discard the top card of your opponent's top deck in between turns, that would be amazing. 100% that would be amazing. Okay, so we only see a Dark Cleave for 160 damage. Now we are hitting for 80, so all I need to do is this. And I will get another, another Buzzle GX, and then I'll just grab the Muscle Band. No, the Muscle Band could be important on no, it's actually not because of Diancy. I'll just grab the Muscle Band. I'll grab the Muscle Band, that will be enough to get me uh, two prizes against this friend. And just one energy is enough to close out the game, pretty much. Once this goes down, this can kill this. I mean, if I attack it, 30, 50, 100. Choice band 160. Yeah. I'm gonna put the 30 on the dark ride because it could come to a point where I don't find strong, I just find a regular energy and a choice band, and that's how I knock out the, the dark ride outside of the sledgehammer turn. Thank you so much for the follow, Cream Lover, as well. This is expanded peak electric indeed, and there's the win, as you'd expect against Turbo Dark, right? 
This is indeed standard. And Peak Electric, did you know that you can now cheer with M&Ms? If you, if you see there, you can now cheer with M&Ms. Okay, so let's find another match. <laughs> Today, I accidentally used my girlfriend's uh, deodorant instead of my own. <laughs> so, every time I, I do something, I get like this waft of aroma of a nice smell <laughs> okay there you go guys thank you so much for the five m ms <laughs> thank you so much i smell pretty indeed <laughs> i swear it was accidentally so i have i have her deodorant on one armpit and i have my deodorant on the other armpit <laughs> how did that happen we keep the deodorants in the same place and they're the same they're just like they're the same brand they're just um and they look the same they just have a different sticker and they smell differently but it, it was in the morning and i was just grabbing stuff quickly and i put some on and i was like ah oh, this smells very strong and then it wasn't my deodorant um okay so let's go ahead and karina this might be a mirror match freaky wolf thank you so much for the extra m ms <laughs> very kind of you and Trippin' and Shroomish as well. Thank you so much for the bits. Those aren't M&Ms, those are bits. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, okay, so what am I getting here? What's my item card? I have no item card that can help me get out of this Tetra spot. Therefore, at the very least, I need to two hit KO this guy. So I either Nest Ball or, um, well, I should grab her Seeker. Either a nest ball to keep standing with Karina. Either a nest ball for the for the for the thing for the Diancy. Yeah, if my opponent goes Guzma, then I just go um, Berserker for Floatstone. So this is fine. Let's go ahead and do that, and then let's pass. That's how you distinguish between the runs, me. At least she was nice enough to share. I mean, it's not like she had a choice. <laughs> Yeah, and it's, it's silly because the, it's the same deodorant, like the chemical formula is the same, it's just one has an added smell and the other doesn't. That's the only difference between a lot of male and female products is the marketing, right? Like in terms of um, like uh, toiletries, it's the same formula, it just has an added smell. What's my A spec in this deck? My A spec in this deck is, I don't remember. What's my ace pick in this deck? Do I have an ace pick? Do I not have an ace pick? Do I not have an ace pick in this deck? Maybe I don't. It's not Dowsing Machine. I don't think I have an ace pick. I think I forgot the ace pick. <laughs> Dripping and Shroomish. How do you do M&Ms? Take a look at the... At the... At the title of the stream. Yeah, take a look at the title of the stream. You, you just type happy table, cheer, and then after the cheer, the number that you want to to send. Yeah. I honestly, maybe I don't have an ace pick. I don't think I have an ace pick in here. I don't think I have, I mean, I definitely, if I do, it's prize, but I think I forgot the ace pick. <laughs> Oopsies. I do believe I forgot the A spec, my friends. I do believe I forgot the A spec. <laughs> um, so only one item card, not a big deal. I do get the two hit KO here. Onto the Trubbish, let's pressure the Trubbish and I get the two hit KO on the puzzle. The damage from the shrine is annoying, however. You have to type it all, yeah, all together, Freaky Wolf. You have to type it like that, but all together. Who needs an ace pick anyways, right? No, I should add an ace pick. <laughs> I should add an ace pick. There you go. <laughs> Thank you so much for the two M&Ms, Freaky Wolf. Thank you so much. Thank you so, so much. Well, like I said, there are five types of M&Ms. The one, which is the red one, the 100, which is the orange one. And then there are other ones, the 1,000, the 5,000, and the 10,000. Just because it required me to make them. 
<laughs> okay. Acer Ola must be nice. Opponent must be nice. Jeez, I made, I've topped the Corina twice. What is this? What even is this? Um, let's go ahead and energy Lodo. Let's grab the beast. That is cool. I mean, I should try to save my puzzle, right? Or should I? Yeah, I should. I really, really should. Eventually it'll go down. Eventually I'll be able to beast ring. But for now, I just want to like win this trade without losing the puzzle. Unless my opponent has Kuzma, right? If they have it, they have it. Last month pre Portland, I'm pretty sure you were playing Scramble Switch. Yeah, but it was sort of puzzle like in Rock, however. Ace picks in standard, but made them prism cards. That would make them a lot better, right? Because then you could play one computer search, 1000 machine, one of a lot of things. So I don't think they would do that. It would be cool, but I don't think they'll do that. And then there's the N. Finally, right? Finally. Okay, so we get first, we draw first blood. We draw first blood and we would really like to find a stadium card to counter this silly shrine. But we don't. So we'll just take the first knockout here. I mean, past the sledgehammer turn, we should have the advantage. Uh, maybe that strong energy on the active would have been better. Maybe. Losing this puzzle though really sucks. Strong hits me for 50. I mean, I might just have to time the end. Plays a neutral. Psyguard EX? Well, I had Psyguard EX, didn't I? I should have been... No, benching Psyguard EX when there's a shrine doesn't seem like a good call. Cut rid of Sudowoodo and Puzzle. However, look at that. Two Rainbow Energy that this card pile already. That is very good news. That is honestly very, very good news for us. Right now... Okay, us getting knocked out. No, never mind. I should attach here, right? Clutch hammer is still a two hit KO. Us getting knocked out coming into our turn is good. If you choose Comp Search as your ace pack, you can potentially play Luzum in Prism since it can be searched one turn in advance with Carbina. That sounds good. And I mean, probably Computer Search is my favorite one, so. Wow, the Beast Energy. Uh, we're gonna lose the puzzle. <laughs> Yikes, so three price turn for my opponent and get sledgehammer turn as well. Bad news indeed. I mean, the end is what we have to rely on, right? The end is what we're gonna have to rely on. I can't believe I never found a stadium though. Uh. Maybe I should have attached the muscle band to the active. I mean, one head slip, right? Hopefully we can get one head slip. 
Only two Pokemon, so Ricardo is not gonna be too too useful. I'll still bench it to thin. And then swing you around the Oh come on. Come on. Probably doesn't matter in the grand scheme of things, it's just annoying to flip two tails. It's just really annoying to flip two tails. I mean, nah. Computer search, off of the end. Shrine doing wonders indeed. Swing and a miss. <laughs> Swingy around the. We're double tailsies. Yeah, I think we're too far behind at this point. I didn't know we were up against a shrine deck, otherwise, I would have started Baby Buzz rather than Big Buzz, right? And he skipped my B string turn. I mean, my Sledgehammer turn. Double guard. What do you think about adding a 1 1 carving break line for the control decks? That could be good for sure. That could definitely be good. Um, I mean, it's it's Ledgehammer turn for him next turn, right? If I know ban the active, because I didn't realize it soon enough. <laughs> Honestly, that's the only reason why. Okay, finally, we got a Brooklet. Just a little, little bit too late. I'll grab the Sudo Wudo. Sudo Wudo is decent here. Even if he gets rid of the puzzle, that's fine. Even if he gets rid of it. He chooses Orange Guru, though. Interesting. So, one, two, three, four, five, six. We are past the item threshold, therefore, our item cards do not matter anymore. Uh, could Ori Koryo be good here? Three Pokemon. I mean, there's nothing, there's literally nothing better to attach to. Well, maybe Diancy. Nah. And then we will swing around. For the double heads, of course. Of course. Because on average, that's one heads each, right? On average, that's one heads each. And yeah, 1 1 carving break with the energy keeper carving seems like a good idea. Why not muscle bind the active? Because the active had a strong, the bench didn't. And there's no guarantee I'm gonna find another strong, so. Relying on the 50-50 chance, on the 75% chance rather that you're gonna flip one heads out of two feels decent enough. Okay, so I feel like I'm gonna need back-to-back -back ends to one to prevent my opponent from winning. He's not finding rainbow energies, which is good. He has lost two already, and he has used quite a few supporters, right? Triple Sycamore, one versus Eager, one N. <laughs> Attaches a muscle band, goes for a Guzma to get that clean KO. That's annoying. Because now that puzzle can finish off this puzzle. Ugh. Ugh. So let's go Psyguard then. Psyguard is gonna be our finisher here. Let's go computer search. I mean, it comes down to my point finding rainbow energies, right? So, this and this. And let's find a strong energy. Okay, so we are relying on the flip once again, but we have to, right? We have to assume I'm gonna flip one head flip. But I don't get an end. I don't get a versus seeker. Why does that happen? I have four versus seekers in my deck. Four out of 18 cards were versus Seekers. Okay, I get the expected head flip. Guzma not good enough. I mean, at least I get the knockout, right? Because it's damaged. But it comes down to my opponent finding Rainbow Energy, I just wish I could end him down to one. Um. Okay. It's gonna come down to rainbow energy. Field lower, it's fine. 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Already passed the item threshold. Does end himself to two, so gives us a chance to find the first seeker. Not gonna happen though. <laughs> Not gonna happen. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Wow, we we actually survive. We actually survive a trash. Oh no, we don't because of this choice band. We don't because of the choice band. Commit the other energy to this guy. That doesn't matter, but it does stand in case I end him, which is the right, uh, the right play. So it will come down to my opponent finding a rainbow energy. So I'm gonna Juniper. This will find me three versus Seekers. Awesome. Let's just sell Storm, get a knockout, and it comes down to this. My opponent has two turns to find rainbow energy. My opponent has two rainbow energy left, promotes the Diancy. Which is a tell. Oh my gosh. Does he get it? Does he whiff? There it is. Oh, that shrine damage was just too much to deal with. And has exactly enough to knock me out, too. Oh. We were so close. We were actually, actually so close. We had all odds stacked against us. And that 70 damage actually mattered. The double tail slip actually mattered because then my opponent in that particular turn, he would not have been able to knock out my puzzle if I hadn't flipped double tails that one turn. So what can you do, right? What can you do? It would have come down to the end to one next turn. It would have come down to that, right? We would have gotten a knockout. No, it wouldn't have. It would have come down to his last rainbow energy. So that double tails actually made the world of difference. A world of difference. Thoughts on Primal Groudon. Primal Groudon is pretty good, but yeah, I would not play it if you don't have access to four tropical beaches. Ah, uh, let's go with the Landris. That was an annoying game to lose for sure. That was an annoying game to lose. Okay, so, okay, <laughs> now we're up against another one. Let's grab the pseudo Wudo to stop him from having a crazy Skyfield, um, a crazy Skyfield turn where he goes Shaman, Shaman, Darkrai, Darkrai, etc, etc. And then we'll pass. shall pass. We see a compressor to start us off. I don't see how my opponent can win though, right? Like we're already stabilized, so. Okay. Ultrals for Hoopa. See? We stopped the big Hoopa turn, which is good. Pull Darkrai. Triple Darkrai GX already in the discard pile. Shaman. Yeah, Hoopa. Wait, what? Why would you Ultra Ball for Hoopa for Shaman? Instead of just directly for the Shaman. And keep a very valuable bench space open. Here's the sky field. Go ahead, my friend. Wow, exactly as I predicted. Exactly as I predicted. So we're dealing 70 damage right now. We need any damage modifier, be it an extra energy, either strong, well, an extra strong energy or a choice band or a muscle band to get a knockout on the dark ride. However, I would assume my opponent was going to retreat onto the Shaman. Um, or he could just attack me, right? He could honestly just attack me here with the dark pulse dark ride. 
for a lot of damage too. If he hits that elixir, he will hit it onto the dark regex, I imagine. Yep. Okay, so not a bad start. And finds the fighting fury belt. Okay, so the fighting fury belt complicates things for sure. Uh, not if you top deck beast energy, however. Beast energy helps in that regard. I'm just gonna go with this guy. Well, actually, no. Puzzle. Okay, so he has 220 HP, right? Yeah, feels bad for Dark Variety. <laughs> Beast, Choice Band, Diancy, yeah. I mean, I need a Choice Band either way, right? Uh, let's go Buzz GX. That way we activate um, Beast Ring. We also have Field Blower. And we got the Choice Band. Pretty lucky here. Jet Punch onto what? I mean, clearly I don't need any damage modifiers. Therefore, let's Jet Punch the Shaman. You never know. You never know when softening up a Shaman is good. You can get Beach's Blade Wailered with Fava. <laughs> Yeah, Fava's a pretty big deal because then it's like Oranguru is the response to Wailer decks and stuff like that sometimes, but then Fava makes it to where the, the energy is just not relevant. Okay, cool. So, let's find our last game for Buzzu. For Buzzy Buzz. Okay. would like to go first, yes, thank you very much. I guess I should turn on the light. Uh, starting with Gory is not a big deal because we already have the Flowstone and we have the Karina as well. Uh, we don't have anything good past the Karina, so even though Karina helps us thin, it's not really helping us like get anywhere solidly. We do seem to move against another Dark deck, though presumably Zorark, right? And now, I mean, there's merit to the nest ball, I feel. To just start setting up as much as we can, since it's like you're using Karina for three cards. I'll get the pseudo Budo and the Buzzle set up. Because this is 100% Zorg. Slugma plus Dark type, that is Zorg, 100%. Um, basic energy could be good. Beast or strong is a bit greedy, so let's go with the basic and then we'll pass. We have protection against delinquent if that happens on turn one, which I doubt. We also have the close zone and we have the Sith here, so we should be good here. We should be good. You've been playing Dark Rain and doing decent against Buzz? Really? Why? Are you playing weakness polyphys or something? I feel like that should always be a bad matchup. There's no way you can play around that. Like you need Eight, nine energy, or eight and a fighting fury belt to one hit KO a puzzle. My puzzle needs one energy to one hit KO you. That's kind of ridiculous. So we're gonna see a Bridget. I fully expect to see a Ditto Prism start here, at least, if not on a Lola Grimer. Because you need to be playing a counter, or a Trollish, because you need to be playing a counter to Sudo Widow if you're playing Zorg. Um, if you're playing aggressive Zorg. Um, there's a sort of Wudo, which is fine. I feel like that's unnecessary for my opponent. The Ditto Prism Star. If I had a Kuzma, I would immediately go after the Ditto Prism Star, because that would pretty much win me the game. He does commit the energy already, which is interesting. Um, three card hand. I will be able to kill this Logma thanks to Karina. And Monster Hunter, thank you so much for the follow. Um, Diancy or um, 
Diancy or or or, or, <laughs> or this gets me a KO, right? However, what I'm going for is perhaps may I, I might need to Garena again next turn for something like Puzzle Plus P String. So because there is a universe in which my opponent targets me down with a foul play Zorg, and that would be bad. Yeah, that would be bad. That would be bad. As someone who played Darker for a long time, you think it's just not good anymore. I mean, Naganadel is an interesting option or addition to the deck, for sure. Um, you're thinking of playing Archie Stoys? I think Archie Stoys is a safe play. Um, it may fall short against Buzz, but with Tudo, it cannot be one killed by Zoro. That's true. Although, all the Zoro decks are going to be playing a counter to, um, to Sudo Budo. If they are the aggressive kind, we see a Zorak GX, so our puzzle should be safe unless my opponent gets a Lolan Monk and a full bench. Um, and then we just have the response. We have the Beast Ring, we have the Boss GX, and we can potentially find Baby Boss for Sledgehammer. Um, Archie is very good right now. It is very good. Um, because what we saw at Portland didn't have a lot of guard. Right, the response to Portland might be a lot of guard, but at Portland we didn't see a lot of guard. And guard um, can have a tricky matchup against Zorg, depending on the field lower counts of Zorg deck. So, but yeah, it has a very bad matchup against Trash Challenge guard. And there's a the victory. Okay, so perhaps that was not the last game. One more game, right? We're winning or losing really quickly with this. We are either winning or losing very quickly with this. We're so close to the Juniper. We are so close to the Juniper, but I don't think I will get it. I mean, if I stream every day, I might. No, probably not. Okay. So we win the coin flip against another dark deck. Against Miranda. And we start with a pretty awful hand. So that might be a saving grace for my opponent. I think either Drop a Garb or uh, Archie's Blastoise are good bets. And we are up against Zorg, so let's go ahead and do that. We fail. All of these cards are very good to top deck. But now we're not going to top deck. I guess not the Pokemon and not the Lysander. But even a basic Pokemon would have been nice. I'm, I think I'm going to end up benching the Giratina next turn. Which really sucks. We see a Klefki, which immediately reveals that we are up against Zorg or Boder. Right? So we're gonna see a turn one Bridget. Okay, Brooklet Hill is a nice top, nice top deck for sure. So I think I definitely go for Pseudo Budo, right? I do have um, Stretcher plus Floatstone to recover the puzzle if I need to, in case the Brooklet Hill gets countered and I can't get a different attacker next turn. But the Pseudo Budo means my puzzle probably survives, which is really good. Yeah, Garbo is another top deck for Portland indeed, but like in the end, Blastoise ended up higher than Garb. Um, and it definitely, like, Drop a Garb is a deck that doesn't gather a, as much attention. Golden Axe, thank you so much for the follow. It doesn't gather as much attention or as much hype as something like Archie's doing well or as something like Zorg Control doing well. Yeah. The matchup for Zorg Control against Archie's Blastoise is not as straightforward and favorable as you think. Yeah, I mean, Archie's Blastoise can definitely stumble onto itself. Many, many times. Okay, so we see the Compressor. We see a Giratina. Nice. So a little bit of extra damage right there. We can see a Stretcher for Zorg GX. But yeah, my opponent needs... 
three more bench Pokemon, which he does have, I guess, with the Execute and the Giratina. And the Alolan Mock. He discarded the Ranger. Okay, so he's gonna. Oh, he has a guard. Never mind. So this communication is gonna go for Shaman, I'd imagine. Yep, there's the Shaman. The good part here is he won't be able to bench Carpink to attach to Garb. The bad part is if he finds a tool card. I mean, it's not the worst. He needs Skyfield and the other bench Pokemon. There's this, there's, uh, using the Execute for Ultra Ball. For another trade, I imagine. Yep. Has she traded already? If that was Mock, though, she would already have the, the knockout pretty much. If that was Mock, she would already have the knockout. So just something to consider on the advantages of Mock versus Garb. Dual Propagation. Did my opponent find Stadium, DC, Flowstone? Wait, did she double propagate? No, just single propagated. And Cold Resist for five. Okay, so hopefully she's gonna win. Right? Hopefully, hopefully she's gonna whiff here. And the funny thing is, if you attach a tool to guard, then Giratina doesn't work, right? Like, you can propagate preemptively and then stop abilities, but you can't Giratina back to your hand. It has to go back to bench. But if you stop abilities to get more bench space, then you can't put that back. So, our underwhelming start is annoying here, but we are still kind of safe. We are still kind of safe. Okay, we're gonna see a compressor. We get hit for 60. We are able, however, to grab a boss GX, which is nice. And even Acerola. Well, yeah, Acerola. Because I want to keep the floatstone available. So, really cool that our stadium did get countered. And then we're hitting for 70 here. Oh, we're short. We are shorter Reno. So let's attack that Zorak, which is a more likely one to attack me. And slow and steady wins the race, right? It's like, it's impressive. Everything that my opponent did the previous turn, and then all we did was um, draw and like, we're searching for a public heal, but 24 cards versus 42 left. Seeker for Colrith. Yeah, so some very poor draws for my opponent here. Some very, very, very poor draws. And another good thing is the Floatstone has gone to Zorg. I don't know how many Floatstones my opponent plays, but losing the Brooklet here sucks. I don't know how many Floatstones my opponent plays. I assume more than one, but if it's only one, then. She's in a bit of trouble.
The 70 damage was huge though, because now two jet punches KO'd it lately. And I can put the 30 on here, spread the damage a little bit, make my um, modifiers a little bit easier. And we can still top deck something good. We have so many good cards in our deck <laughs> that we can top deck. So many good cards. Oh, wow. Commit. Wow, that's a big commitment. The choice man is so unnecessary, though. <laughs> the choice man is so unnecessary. It's actually funny. Like, Hitting for 100 twice or hitting for 130 twice is literally the same thing. So why would you commit even the choice bend? Okay. Uh, yeah, Peter, testing for Anaheim, showcasing different decks. Uh, dead drawing here with Mr. Buzz here. <laughs> How about you? How are you? What are you up to? Execute. Trade. Acer Olam. I mean, we get Sledgehammer, which is nice. And we get two potential turns of Beast Ring. Grabs a Guzma. Trying to find a play for Anaheim. I know, it's not exactly easy, isn't it? I mean, now that, like, the choice ban, the previous turn and the choice ban this turn. In both instances worked, I guess. So yeah, we are in trouble now. We are definitely in trouble or we know. Okay. And versus Seeker to use Acer a lot. Oh my god. It's just Sledgehammer, right? <laughs> Literally nothing else I can do. My opponent is not, like, there's no universe in which my opponent ends me here. There's absolutely no universe in which my opponent ends me. Which sucks. But therefore I don't have to be worried about playing my cards. The previous games we've top deck Karina so many times, but this game, and this can happen, right? This can happen to pretty much any deck. I expect to see another base roll up, perhaps. Maybe finally a KO with Zorg. Yep, my bud will finally commit to KO with Zorg. We'll shut off abilities. I will be able to get a puzzle back, but that's not gonna be enough. Are you still big on the? Um, on the unknown decks, Peter? Oh, jeez. Finds a Bursting Balloon. Commits a Choice Band as well. Puzzle, it seems so clunky when you put in Versus Seeker, indeed. Yeah, this might have to be a, a noopsie daisy here. Okay, there's a Karina. Wow. So Karina. Gets me Beast Ring. So we still have a shot here. Although probably not. Evan already has a choice band there. And we'll have the Clef key as well. But yeah, no, we don't we don't have any chance. We don't have any chance here. And absorption. They have a tough time with puzzle, yeah. And Sudowoodo, right? Sudowoodo is an issue as well. Yeah, so we get rid of the Pokemon that are damaged. We'll be able to Clef Key to deny Sudowoodo. We'll get a full bench. We'll knock out my puzzle. How many DCs is that? Just, well, that's the third DCE. It's just Jet Punch. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, because you can't afford, like, the Solosis are vulnerable, and um, Mr. Mime 
You can't afford the best space of Mr. Mime. Quaking Punch and Drawing is a pain for Gnome. Yeah, Quaking Punch can be an auto loss, I guess, to an extent. Ooh, we see an N. So my bone might not be able to get the KO here. Wow. My bone might generally not be able to get a knockout this turn. Nah, Ranger is too much. Don't need items, okay. And it's not Reniculus based, I guess. The ones I've tried were Reniculus based and they were tough to deal with the item lock. To my opponent, I mean, yeah, the choice band helps him, right? Yeah, Patches, and then he needs four bench Pokemon. Oh yeah, he doesn't need to use Quacky. Oh. Hello, how on earth are we actually going to win this game? How on earth are we actually going to win this game? <laughs> what? How is this a thing? How is this actually a thing? 20 damage short for my opponent. Get the knockout down to one price card. Have computer search to hit any modifier we want. My opponent has to end me again. And, well, yeah, I guess has to find the last TCE as well, which doesn't seem too difficult. Wow. Did he mess up? Did she mess up? Maybe. Maybe she messed up. Maybe she doesn't have another bench, uh, basic Pokemon, because look. No more Zoru was left. Potentially a Dedo Prism Star. Potentially a Shaman. Uh, has three Kiratinas. Wow. <laughs> uh, potentially a Lele, at least a Lele left. Right? So maybe, maybe she messed up. Maybe she messed up. Yeah, that Giratina is not very good in the deck. You only get extra bench space versus Sudowoodo after you shut it down, indeed. <laughs> I agree, Dragon Rage. It really doesn't make much sense. Okay, so there's the end. So maybe I will get the knockout, right? Maybe I will get the knockout. The thing is, she might not have KO and Buzzle. And now this is a beautiful card to see when they end you to one. <laughs> I guess we were meant to win this game. Right? I guess we were meant to win this game. So we need a strong energy to only need one head slip. We need an INC to only need one head slip. Uh, we need the beast energy to need zero head slips. We need a choice band to need zero head slips. We need a muscle band to need one head slip or any combination of those um, to need zero head slips. I'm honestly very surprised, but yeah, I agree. The Giratina does not make much sense. Does not make much sense because you show up abilities, therefore you can't Giratina. It's not like executes, and you definitely would never play three Giratinas, especially not with a single choice band. Um, the Klefki does mean that Diancy is no longer an out. Right, Diancy is no longer an out. Has gotten rid of one Skyfield. Probably has the other one. And I, I never put in the ace pick, did I? <laughs> I never put in the ace pick. Oopsies. I never did end up putting the ace pick. Okay. Did it break? It's not my, oh. I don't know what's happening. I have no idea what happened. PTC Joe might have crashed here. Yeah, my timer is ticking. 
The gold thing is still around her username, as if it's her turn. But my timer is ticking. I mean, I would call this a win, right? 91 Romeo, thank you so much for the follow. Guess we were not meant to win this game, right? <laughs> Guess we were really just not meant to win this game. Guess we were just not meant to win this game. After everything. <laughs> After everything we did, we can't win this game. Okay, so... Wow, there's the timer again. Like, right here. There's a timer again. That's so odd. Uh, I, that's the second time I've run out of time. And now it's my opponent's turn. Look, now her timer is running down. And now it's... Now it's stopped. Now neither timer is running down. I have no clue what's going on. But yes. So here's what happens. We Juniper. Right? And then... If we hit a choice band, we win. If we hit a... How we win is choice band. Or a strong plus muscle band. Or beast energy. Diancy is no longer an out because of garb. Um, definitely crashed. So... And we can't even concede. Huh. So I guess we just have to close the game. Okay. So... That will be all for the video. We don't know if we won or not. I feel like odds are in our favor for us to win. Uh, because even if we whiff completely any of the tool cards, two heads wins us the game as well. So odds are overwhelmingly in our favor, even though it's not 100% for us to win, right? Um, so I don't know, at least seven out of 10 times we probably win this match. So yeah, guys, thank you so much for watching. It was a pleasure hanging out with you guys today. Um, if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to leave a like, it really helps.